This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. This one comes from Dan Teston and refers to China and particularly to the accusation, the criticism, the comment often made that China has either relied on stealing Western technology or somehow weaponizing uh, greed in the West to its own uh, advantage, thoughts like that. I have been in turn quite critical of that way of thinking, and I'm going to make the case now briefly, but I think in a way that should resolve the matter. First, a bit of history. Every country that we have record of, every region of the world that entered a period when it envied the further economic development of another part of the world, chose sooner or later to catch up and hopefully surpass the other area by adapting, adopting, copying, learning the advanced technology of whatever they were trying to catch up to and surpass. There is nothing new or shocking or strange or exceptional about this. I'll give you examples. Because modern capitalism developed first in England back in the 17th and 18th century, the rest of Europe copied English technology. Sometimes it was literally stolen. Other times it was purchased. Still, still other times arrangements were made to learn it or to copy it or to partner with it. Many mechanisms. The United States as a fledgling country did that in relationship to the more advanced economy of the British Empire. The Germans copied the British. Then the Japanese copied Western Europe and the United States. And the copying has always gone on in multiple forms. So what the Chinese are accused of doing is something that most of the accusers will find likewise in the pasts of their own countries or regions, making this sort of criticism old-fashioned, out of fashion, nowhere near the shocking surprise it's often presented to be. Now let's turn to the Chinese version of this. I have no doubt that in some instances there were or could be found to be examples where Chinese citizens literally stole Western technology when they were in a position to do so. Since it has happened everywhere else, there's really no reason to think it wouldn't happen in this case. But even if it did, it accounts for a relatively small portion, as best we can tell. And the reason we can tell this is that we know quite well how the basic transfer of Western capitalist technology to China was accomplished, particularly over the last 30 or so years. So let me explain to you how that was done. Over those 30 years, China, step by step, became the surprising, the dynamic, the success story of the, quote, less developed world. Their emergence from being one of the poorest country, with the bad luck of also being one of the largest countries by population, meant that they were not expected to do real well in terms of catching up to Western Europe 
North America, Japan, the developed parts of the world. But they did so. They did so under the leadership and directorship of the Chinese Communist Party, a party begun back in the early parts of the 20th century, building slowly to make a revolution after 1945 and to win a civil war that emerged out of that revolution in 1949. And they have been, that is the Chinese Communist Party, in, the, in charge of, in leading position in the People's Republic of China ever since, coming on to 75 years very soon. During that time, they accomplished a record-breaking pace and scope of economic development without Western foreign aid, with Western hostility, political, military, ideological, you name it. Despite all of that, they grew. The working class of that country over the last 75 years has seen the average real wage go up five, six, seven times, far beyond anything achieved in the United States or anywhere else in the rest of the world over that same period of time. In short, China achieved two things of enormous importance. Number one, they developed out of a poor, backward, agrarian culture and society a modern, rich, well-educated, skilled working class, willing and able to work at wages far below comparable work in Western Europe, North America, and Japan. Also, because they raised the standard of living of masses, hundreds of millions of people, the Chinese market for all manner of consumer goods took off in the last 30 years, making China a remarkable place. Wages way lower than in Western capitalism and a market bigger and growing faster than Western capitalism could compete with. And this made Western capitalists realize that their well-being the growth of their profits, their success as corporations meant they had to get in on the advantages offered by China. Basically, low wages, advantageous working conditions, and a fast-growing market, the key ingredients to successful capitalist enterprise. So American, British, French, Japanese, Canadian corporations, when they could, and to make more money, invested in China. They set up factories. They partnered with Chinese businesses, with state businesses, and with private Chinese businesses. They got in on the low wages and the exploding market. But the Chinese, under the leadership of the Communist Party, demanded something in exchange for opening their country to capitalists, which they otherwise wouldn't have wanted to do, providing cheap labor and a market where the Western capitalists could compete against Chinese companies, both state and private. Here's what they demanded. You have lots of technology that we want to share. We want to learn. And so the deal was done. You American companies, for example, you get low wages, good working conditions, and a fast-growing market. We get partnering in on your learning from your technology. No one held a gun to the American corporation's head. 
No one required them to come to China, to make deals in China, to profit from China. They did that because they chose to. It's how capitalism works. It's not about greed. It's not about weaponizing anything. It's normal capitalist business. And to call it after you've made the deal, which you made voluntarily, to call it stealing is something about which you shouldn't be angry. You should be ashamed. This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work.